A U.S. Air Force F-15 shot down a satellite orbiting some 345 miles above the Earth all the way back in September of 1985. But just about 36 years later, in November of 2021, Russia followed suit, launching a ground-launched anti-satellite missile at their own Cosmos 1408 satellite and destroying it in low Earth orbit. But this time, almost immediately, the U.S. issued a series of statements calling the Russian test irresponsible. Was this just some geopolitical hypocrisy, or had things changed? Well, it turns out things had changed, and that change could be described by something we call the Kessler Syndrome. Now, the Kessler Syndrome is the name we ascribe to a sort of orbital doomsday scenario in which a single satellite is destroyed, creating a debris cloud orbiting the Earth at some 15,000 miles per hour that goes on to impact other satellites, destroying them and growing that cloud of debris until eventually all of the satellites in low Earth orbit have been consumed by the debris cloud and completely destroyed creating a sort of shotgun blast around the Earth that would wipe out the world's entire satellite infrastructure. Now, the more satellites there are in orbit, the more danger there is of the Kessler Syndrome. And back in 1985, when the U.S. conducted its test, there weren't all that many people in the space game. In fact, that year, there were only around 165 satellites launched into orbit, whereas in 2021, when Russia conducted their test, there were 1,810 launches just that year and more than 7,000 satellites in orbit. Now, the Kessler Syndrome's name is derived from NASA scientist Donald Kessler from a paper he published back in 1978. But the truth is, the concept has sort of evolved over the years. And Kessler's Syndrome simulations in 2021 showed that the Russian missile test created a 10% chance that other satellites or spacecraft, including the International Space Station, could be impacted by debris measuring about three millimeters or smaller. Now that is plenty small, but it's important to remember we're talking about debris traveling at 15,000 miles per hour, making any impact a potentially serious situation. Now the chances of a Kessler Syndrome scenario increase right alongside the number of satellites in orbit. And today, there are around 8,200 satellites being tracked overhead as we speak. Once we broach that 65,000 satellite barrier, however, the chances of a Kessler Syndrome scenario after any single satellite intercept increase to 100%. And while 65,000 satellites may sound like a whole lot, we are closer to that than you might think. SpaceX alone has already put more than 5,000 satellites into orbit, with licenses already outstanding for 7,000 more, and more pending for another 30,000. And SpaceX isn't the only company or organization rapidly fielding a high number of smaller, lower-cost satellites in low Earth orbit. The United States, Russia, China, India, and a number of other nations are all following suit. And what that means is that we are increasing the number of satellites above our heads at an exponential rate, increasing the chances of a Kessler Syndrome scenario for any single satellite intercept. And as a result, there's a growing contingent of U.S. military officials saying that we can't count on the idea of there being satellites to rely on if we ever find ourselves in a conflict with a nation with anti-satellite capabilities and the political will to use them. But if it comes as any consolation, you should know that there are more than one way to destroy a satellite. In fact, one of the easiest ways might be just to grab it and pull it into a degrading orbit so that it burns up upon re-entry. And it looks as though both Russia and China already have inspector satellites in orbit that are designed to do precisely that. So I guess we can take some comfort in knowing that nations are hard at work developing ways to fight wars in space without compromising our ability to order an Uber.